so rohit uh, so to start the interview uh, we will start with uh, your introduction so could you please provide uh, a short introduction let's say your educational background and your working um, experience and your uh, certification details sure sir uh, good morning sir my name is rohit uh, i am from pune uh, recently i had done my uh, certification global certification uh, in sap mm that is ecc and sporana uh, a total i had 2.5 years of experience uh, uh, in which in my in my i had worked uh, in my previous company for one year in a manufacturing company uh, i had worked as a maintenance in charge as well as i was involved in procurement activity also before that i had uh, 1.5 years of experience uh, in uh, alasap company which is in dubai uh, so i was worked in a uh, as an electrical engineer they are also had uh, involved in uh, purchasing activity and my educational background is like uh, i had completed my uh, btech uh, in 2018 from lowly professional university uh, in electrical engineering okay so you have done a certification in uh, sap ecc also and in s4 hana also right right sir yeah okay so could you please uh, let me know the transition from end user to consultant like uh, end user to this uh, certification like uh, how you got to know this certification thing and how you get to like uh, learn for the certification uh, actually uh, one of my colleague was there uh, he was uh, he had uh, he was also with me so uh, he had done the certification and uh, he had got the job in the consultant role at that moment i got to know that this is also a opportunity for a, a procurement side if we had gone and we can enter into the it sector and uh, get into a job in a, a, a procurement and a consulting way so mm-hmm. from there i got to know about the global certification and all okay okay great yeah so uh, as you have done both ecc and s4 hana so could you please uh, let me know that uh, what is the difference between uh, both of the structure and core structure and uh, let's say what is the difference main basic difference between s4 hana and ecc okay um in uh, like ecc and s4 hana uh, like configuration side a uh, few difference are there uh, mm-hmm. like uh, they had they had bought some uh, like uh, med- uh, material ledger is uh, like mandatory in s4 hana uh, whereas in ecc it was not required for uh, accounting and all uh, multiple currencies and for the actual costing mm-hmm. for that s4 hana and also in s4 hana like bp transaction like a business partner had been involved so in whereas in ecc like uh, we had using the different transactions code for vendor creating the vendor and creating the customer like xk01 mk01 all that been absolute and uh, for customer also so all that had been data uh, uh, then uh, uh, created into bp uh, business transaction in s4 hana so there is single transaction so it is um, many uh, transaction had been absolute from the ecc and uh, we got the esporana and also many deployment option also had given in esporana like it was not uh, there in ecc uh, like we had uh, we had new uh, on premises option and uh, uh, cloud system also and hybrid system also so yeah that is also an involvement and for end user site also it is like uh, it has uh, developed the fury apps uh, for the end user site so they don't have to involve in such lengthy trainings and all so it is like a um, easy screens for them so they don't require hard training uh, to get uh, into the purchasing site so it is easy to get to learn about the uh, sap software for the end user site so as you have uh, done the certification in ecc so could you please uh, let me know the basic p2p cycle and how it happens in sap yes sir 
uh, first of all uh, user department uh, generate the request uh, and whatever the material required so they will create the purchase requisition based upon their requirement and their requirement uh, comes to the uh, purchasing side and then uh, if vendor is available uh, they will go for that vendor if it is not then they will go for the request for quotation uh, after request for quotation uh, uh, then vendor will send their quotation to the uh, uh, to the customer to us and then we will maintain that quotation into the system and we will do the price comparison and many more comparisons will be there uh, that will not be in the system so uh, based upon that comparison and we will select one vendor who is uh, suitable for us and who is giving us good reasonable price uh, and after that uh, we will uh, select that vendor and we will create the uh, PO against that vendor and uh, P, uh, PO creations will be there and after that we will send that uh, PO to that uh, particular vendor which we had selected and then uh, PO monitoring will be there like uh, uh, order uh, purchase order acknowledgement we will expect from that vendor after that he had acknowledged uh, then when the when he will send the good to the company premises uh, then the quality inspection process will uh, be done after quality inspection if material is okay uh, then we will go for the good receipt and after good receipt uh, we, uh, we will do for uh, invoice verification and after invoice verification we will go for payment processing so how this process is uh, mapped in sap from purchase uh, from pr to uh, MIRO, MIRO, invoice uh, verification. Mm -hmm. We are uh, processing all the activities uh, which is going on from PR, uh, PO, MIGO, and MIRO. Mm -hmm. Invoice receipt, good receipt. Okay. Okay. So you have also mentioned that uh, you have. Uh, um, you know the process of organization structure in MM, right? So can you please yes, let sir. me know what is the difference between organization structure of MM and organization structure of SAP? What is the difference between that? Um, the difference is uh, like uh, in MM client, um, we will mostly deal with the plant uh, purchasing organization, purchasing group, storage locations. Whereas in uh, when we say for total MM, then client and company code will also be uh, included in that structure. Okay. That makes the difference, yeah. Okay. okay. So you have also uh, have the knowledge of material master configuration? Yes, sir. So what kind of materials are there? Uh, what kind, what type of materials are there in SAP? Can you name some of the important, uh, let's say material types? Material types. Uh, uh, we have uh, raw material, ROH. Uh, we have HALB for semi-finished good. Uh, FERT for uh, finished good. Um, and uh, NLAG is there. Uh, and uh, and UNBW is there. Uh, VARP is for packaging, or I guess this is also there, and many more. Hmm. These are okay. the famous ones. Okay. okay. So let's say for ROH material, what are the user department screens that are allowed, and which departments are not allowed for ROH type materials? For raw materials, uh, basically, uh, basic uh, data is uh, necessary for the client uh, will be maintained, and uh, purchasing data is mandatory, and general storage data and uh, accounting data. These are the main data which are important, and also we can uh, it is uh, MRP data also uh, which is important for the. Um, important thing and for the sales point of view like if you want to uh, go for this uh, finished good then sales uh, comes into the picture but for raw material also it is uh, there but mostly we will go for the uh, all these areas uh, which are their basic data uh, purchasing accounting and general data and mrp which are allowed 
ओके ओके सो फॉर लेट्स से फॉर द बेसिक डेटा ऑफ मेटेरियल मास्टर इन विच टेबल इट इज गोइंग टू बी स्टोर्ड एम ए आर एमआर ओके so if i want to look the stock for a material let's say in the table label for a storage location so where i can look for that mard sir hmm. yeah okay 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 now i show okay so vendor master also you have configured in both uh, in uh, let's say in s4 hana and in ecc also right 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 so what is the difference uh, in configuration in both the modules let's say in s4 hana and in uh, ecc apart from that uh, t code uh, yes uh... if you want to go for the uh, configuration wise uh, like in vendor uh, configuration we will uh, assign we will go for the define vendor groups and all uh, vendor account groups and we will define number ranges and we will assign that number ranges to the vendor group but in case of ecc uh, we have to do the vendor group also but uh, as well we will go for the bp configuration that is a business partner we have to define the business partner group and we have to define the number ranges and also we need to define the number ranges to the bp group and uh, and mapping will be there, uh, there for bp and vendor mapping will be there where we will assign the number assignment for direction of bp to vendors uh, for that uh, we can have the common uh, uh, like assignment for a bp uh, and vendor account groups and also we can have the bp role configuration also here we will uh, define the bp roles and uh, group of the uh, bp roles will be done okay okay yeah. so you have mentioned procurement process in uh, like uh, stock transfer order so what kind of stock transfer orders are there in sap um yeah um, stock transfer order um, first of all we have plant um, storage location to storage location plant to plant and company code to company code mm. so you want me to explain sir everything no that's it uh, can you just uh, let me know the process of let's say from comp from one company code to another company code how the process full flow will happen um it is mostly uh, it is uh, sorry it is done in intra company sto um, sorry inter company sto from mm -hmm. one plant to uh, one plant of company code to another plant of company code mm -hmm. um, where mostly uh, the uh, item uh, document type which we use that is nb and uh, standard document type and uh, here the delivery type will be uh like nlcc uh and uh, rest of the configuration will be like same only uh, supplying plant and all it will be a vendor, uh, vendor side vendor will be our uh, normal normal vendor like normal vendor uh, which we do the procurement process same uh, process will be done but um, here we will maintain the sales data and all uh, sales data basic data um and sales general data and purchasing view and general data and accounting views uh, all this we will maintain uh, here sales data is mandatory here actual billing process will uh, process will takes place uh, where we will do the billing as we are treating the our uh, as a vendor only uh, and uh, here we will maintain the shipping data uh, where shipping data is to be maintained and uh, for that um here delivery type is as i said nlcc we will use uh, like receiving plan uh, the one who uh, wants the material who will uh, create the purchase order against it and then that uh, purchase order will comes to the uh, customer side and uh, there there they will 
send us the material like uh, they will confirm the purchase order like and after that they will send us mm. okay good reception beta okay. i'm not pretty sure about uh, inter uh, inter inter company sq like intra i had work but uh, inter i haven't work on the system so bit confused mm. okay no issues uh, so can you explain the subcontracting process uh, yes sir uh basically subcontracting process is uh, like uh, uh, we have the raw materials uh, and we uh, we will send this to the um subcontracting vendor using the 541 movement type and then um, that uh, subcontracting vendor will uh, make that uh, raw material uh, into the semi finished or finished good and then uh, he will send us back to the company premises and we will receive it Through uh, movement type one zero one. Hmm. Okay. We will receive it on one zero one or any different uh, um, movement type is there. Yeah, one zero one we will receive, but uh, simultaneously different movement types also triggered. Uh, like five forty three will also be triggered just be just because. Uh, the material which we had sent it to uh, the subcontracting vendor and he had consumed that so 543 will also be triggered and if it is some scrap material is there also then 545 will also be triggered okay uh, so yeah. so you also know about the vendor consignment process so how we can receive yes, the material from vendor in in case of uh, consignment process how we can do the gr for that first of all sir we will create the po uh, for that consignment vendor uh, mm-hmm. using item category k and after receiving uh, that we have to maintain the info record and all uh, info record is mandatory uh, price and all we will maintain and uh, tax tax uh, tax code is also mandatory for that Mm-hmm. and after creating the po uh, the vendor will send us the goods and we will do the good receipt mm-hmm. and after good receipt um, the stock will be lying in the consignment uh, consignment stock uh, that is not uh, we are not uh, like the liability belongs to the uh, vendor only mm-hmm. whenever we uh, required the stock mm-hmm. then we can transfer that stock to own stock and then liability belongs to us okay so my question yeah. is that how you can receive that uh, vendor consignment stock receive is... uh, through good receipt sir 101 101 only yes okay no issues Okay, so you have also mentioned that account determination process. Also, you know you are aware of that. So, could you let me know how the account will get triggered and in which transaction we um, are uh, triggering the GL accounts? Uh, the accounts get triggered uh, mostly based upon the valuation class, uh, which we maintain in the material master for standard procurement. um and also based upon uh, like a uh, valuation class i had said uh, so it is connected to the material type and uh, due to the cat- account category reference uh, which we had maintained in the obyc setting uh, due to which uh, this uh, accounts gl accounts get triggered like uh, we will maintain in the transaction key uh, like for bsx um, we will maintain uh, valuation grouping code and account modifier and um, uh, valuation class and gl account so with this combination uh, exact correct gl account will be triggered based upon valuation class mm-hmm. so how this account you are saying like say bsx or anything it will trigger for any kind of material how how it is configured for that um that is uh, sir uh, based upon the movements which we are uh, movements uh, goods movement which we are doing and movement type which we are performing in the mygo screen uh, like movement type will be that a link to the account modifiers and transaction keys uh, in the configuration so whenever we do the 
con uh, this uh, configuration uh, like activities then uh, exact gl account will be picked up based upon that transaction keys uh, which we had configured in the system okay uh, yeah. so you also mentioned physical inventory so you, as you have already worked as a end user also so in that uh, experience have you any time configured like uh, you have done this physical inventory process no sir uh, actually uh, this process haven't uh, come across my side but uh, i know overall process what what does it mean but uh, i haven't come across it okay so um, as you have also worked as a end user and you have trained in uh, let's say you have certified in the consulting role so can uh, do you know the difference what is the let's say in physical inventory what are the process that needs to be carried out by the consultant and what is the uh, process that needs to be carried out by the end users do you know the difference Uh, yes, sir. Like uh, for the end user side, uh, they will first of all uh, maint physical inventory. Basically, we are uh, maintaining and checking the stocks, and we are maintaining uh, checking the variances. So basically, here we will go for MI zero uh, one transaction code. Uh, for that, we will create the physical inventory document, and after creating the document, we will print that document and uh, through MI twenty one. and uh, we will give it to the um, technical person uh, who is a supervisor or whoever in charge who can count that so uh, we'll go and check uh, give the system uh, data and print out so he can go and count the physical stock uh, whatever is there and he will uh, um, give the exact number of uh, whichever he found and if we whatever the amount we have found then we will enter that count Uh, and uh, we will enter that count through MI zero four transaction. And after counting and entering entering into the system, whatever the difference which we had found, and then we will analyze the difference through MI twenty. Uh, and then uh, if whatever the difference are there, if it is less quantity or more quantity, then we will post accordingly. And MI through MI zero seven is the transaction code. We can post the difference. Mm. And uh, whereas in um, configuration side uh, as we had said number ranges and uh, all these activities takes place by the um, consultant side mm. which we do in the back end like configuration systems and all okay. and whereas the end end user side this process which i had told earlier okay okay yeah so you have mentioned that uh, logistics invoice verification so in logistics invoice verification there is two process one is credit memo and uh, another one is subsequent credit right so what is the difference yes. between them what is the difference between credit memo and subsequent credit yes um subsequent uh, sorry credit memo means like if we had sended uh, if we had some rejected some material uh, so we want that payment should be uh, given back so vendor will return that uh, payment what whatever we had done invoice before that so we want that uh, payment to be back so at that time we will do the credit memo so that uh, the material for which we had rejected and we had sent it back so we we want the value should be back in our accounts and secondly subsequent credit means um, it is also like um, vendor will only provide us um, when uh, in case we had found that uh, the everything process had been done but when we found that the material he had charged something extra for something or if found that in market like that material price had been reduced for few rupees and all or he had included more tax charges or toll charges uh, for shipping and all so at that moment uh, we had came to know uh, for that purchase order so he will what he will do uh, we will create some uh, subsequent credit against it so based upon that material only so we will get the um, purchase order we will get the uh, subsequent credit okay so you have also mentioned for the pricing procedure so 
whenever I am, let's say, I am uh, creating a PO. So in that PO, uh, the price will automatically trigger whenever I enter the material and all the subsequent details I entered in the PO, price will be generating automatically, right? Right. So how this price will be triggering in the PO? What is the basic criteria? Um, here we will maintain the condition records. Based upon the condition records, price will trigger like MEK1 from where we can maintain it. Uh, from there, uh, the price will be triggered accordingly based mm -hmm. upon the vendors and purchase organization. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So you have also mentioned uh, as a release strategy also. So yes. what kind of different uh, release strategy are there for PR and PO? Uh, we have like in PR, uh, we have both uh, um, like without classification and with classification. And in PO, we have only with classification only. Uh, here the difference is like uh, in PR, we can uh, release at item level also at header level also but in PO uh, we can release only in header level so this is the main difference mm. and we have the communication tables mm. so what is the communication table for uh, PO uh, that is C-E-K-K-O okay if it is a service C-E-S-S-R okay okay yes. Um, hmm. okay, you are also mentioned that uh, MRP also, right? Yes. Okay, so what is the difference between ERS and uh, normal invoicing process? Okay, um, in an, a normal invoicing, uh, here we like we uh, we can have the price fluctuations and everything and uh, like I will say first ERS ERS means e uh, evaluated receipt settlement uh, basically what we hear is the price and uh, shipping price mostly will be fixed for the some particular vendor only um, the for particular vendor so that uh, we can maintain the ERS that is like uh, invoicing will be done uh, like automatically uh, e uh, after indicating that uh, ER, ERS settlement. So we don't have to go for multiple uh, uh, invoices. MRRL is the transaction code through which we can do the um, invoices settlement at uh, once. Many invoices can be done in a uh, one go. Whereas in like a normal procurement, the prices and all will not be fixed for some vendors. So here the price fluctuations will be there. So we cannot uh, directly go for the some transaction code and uh, we can enter a, a automatic process for invoices. Here the fluctuations will be there for each and everything. So for that reason, um, there is a difference between ERS and normal procurement. Okay, so that's it then for the interview. We are good to close this uh, session. Then uh, we will uh, start one more session to um, discuss the outcome. Right? Join with the yeah. same. Join with the same link. Okay. Let me just disconnect yeah. this one. Join with the same link. Then we will start uh, the review session. Okay. So it was a good session. Okay. So your subjective knowledge. You, is, yeah, your subjective knowledge is good. Okay, so I can say okay. it was, uh, um, if, if I, um, like, um, if I exclude the, uh, like, the way you explaining, okay, some somewhere it is kind of little bit uh, issue is there, okay, apart from that, your subject to knowledge is good, you are uh, good, uh, like, if there is any uh, fresher kind of job is there, definitely you will succeed, okay, so let's, let's let's start with your uh, resume itself okay so yeah. resume is fine resume is uh, okay but if you have some experience okay so 
try to put it in the let's say a four side or in the first section try to put the experience in somewhere okay so okay. you have mentioned your profile so profile is good till profile it's good that uh, you are trained in uh, sap mm consultant s4 hana consultant that's okay you are training uh, means you are a certified consultant so it's better to put uh, first those things but after that put the experience part also because you have um, um, two and a half years or more than two and a half years of experience you are working right so if you are putting your experience okay. part in the last section so everyone will get to know that uh, you are only certified and you are a fresher okay so okay yeah so try to put this section this uh, work experience section little bit um, before um, in the uh, resume okay try to put it in uh, okay. let's say first or second column after your technical skill maybe you can uh, maintain there that you have a work experience as a sap it means end user experience is also a sap experience right it is not outside okay, yeah. sap experience it is a experience it will be counted as a experience so you have a let's say end user roles means it will be um, counted as a let's say um what is called uh, yeah i'm forgetting that okay so it is a experience it will be counted as a experience only okay so you have to put it in yes, sir. i will do that yeah okay yes, okay so then let's come to your uh, subjective part okay so yeah. um in the organization structure okay in the organization structure when i asked you like what is the difference between uh, mm organization structure and your uh, let's say sap organization structure so basically mm organization structure what you have explained that is correct that is not a problem but you need to be uh, let's say whenever you are answering your answer should be to the point okay so you have to answer like in sap mm we have top organization uh, organization structure is purchasing organization okay in purchasing yeah. organization next will to will be plant and then it will be storage location that's it okay and if someone right. is asking you about the organization structure for uh, let's say sap then it will come from company code then company code to plant plant to then storage location it will come like that okay you just have to mention those right. things okay just be okay yeah. be um, be pointed to your answer okay and okay. Uh, yeah then uh, let's say material master and vendor master that's okay that's not a problem okay and if someone is asking you question on uh, let's say stock transfer order so i have asked you what is the process for a stock transfer order what is the process flow right, right. So, got it yeah so whenever someone is asking you about the process flow start with the process what is the process starting you will have two plants one is receiving plant one is supplying plant so receiving okay. plant receiving plant should have a stock transfer order for that pr they will create a sto then sto will move to the uh, supplying plant in supplying plant they will do the pgi and then after pgi you will receive the um, stock in your let's say in your plant okay they will do the shipping and all the things okay. they will do you will receive the plant in your uh, receiving plant then you will do the 101 moment type okay that's it don't okay. go, don't yeah. go into the uh, let's say configuration part and all the things if someone is asking what is the configuration part then you can uh, let them know like uh, okay we have to configure the um, um, customer as a vendor then we have to maintain the shipping point and all the things all the configuration details then if someone is asking you about the configuration then tell them the configuration process okay yes, and uh, yeah. subcontracting process it was fine no problem but uh, whenever you are saying uh, um, subcontracting process definitely add this uh, we will be doing 101 moment type in the gr process but in the item screen it will be triggering 541 moment type 543o moment type it will trigger right so include yeah. in that include in that okay and uh, okay. also we have not discussed about the accounting entries for each and every process so um, i believe you okay. are uh, uh, sure about that you are aware of that okay if you yes, are sir. not sure yes. about the accounting entries so just check for that okay and I'm aware uh, of that. 
okay okay so vendor consignment process that is also fine whatever you have explained that is good but uh, in the i have asked you like what is the process of receiving the vendor consignment stock so whenever you are doing the gr you have to do it in 101k moment type not in the 101 moment type 101 means it will be okay. your valuated stock only right so you will right. have to say vendor consignment stock is 101k so whenever you are doing the 101k that will be in the vendor consignment okay then after right. that if you okay. want to yeah then after that if you want to move the stock to your uh, own stock or you want to move to um, if you want to directly um, um uh, let's say do the gi for that uh, consignment stock to your uh, let's say a cost center directly you can do it not a problem okay yeah 201k right yes yes so next come to let's um, uh okay uh, automatic account determination so accounting determination process you have explained uh, well but uh, the thing is when uh, i asked you how this uh, bsx account is triggered so basically it will with the moment type there is a um there is a valuation string over there right you missed that yeah, one yeah. Thing over there. Right. okay okay, okay. So, yeah i got it yeah you just have to add that so with the valuation string means uh, with the moment type it is at, uh, assigned to the valuation string and with the valuation string it is attached to it is assigned to the valuation um, uh, the transaction event key and the account modifier that will come in a later part but yeah. uh, with the um, moment type it will be uh, assigned to the uh, what is that valuation string right so include that yeah okay yes sir. uh physical inventory yeah. part it is good it is okay so every physical inventory what is transactions are there that needs to be uh, done by your uh, end users only unless you have uh, a yeah. custom process that uh, you are not able to do the uh, let's say for the all the material you need to do the um, let's say annual inventory and uh, in uh, regular mi01 you are not able to do the uh, let's say you are not able to include all the materials if that is the case definitely you will have to extract the list from the table level is if that is the case then uh, definitely for extracting from the table level um, consultant will work on that apart from that everything is fine whatever you have explained it is good okay and yeah. uh, credit memo and subsequent credit so basic difference between credit memo and subsequent credit means credit memo both the quantity and the price will decrease right and yeah, in yeah. subsequent credit only the price will decrease with the constant quantity, quantity. will be fixed yeah. fixed right yeah right so whatever you are explaining that is okay that is fine but just take some technical like uh, whatever you are explaining that is like it is a longer explanation and um, okay. yeah whatever you are explaining that is good but uh, as a end user that will be good but as a consultant you need to be uh, like what is the precise precisely how can you answer like okay, okay. so you have to answer like that and uh, okay so release procedure and pricing procedure uh, okay so in pricing procedure also whenever uh, someone is asking how the price is getting triggered so basically don't uh, tell about the directly the mek1 uh, transaction so mek1 is only we are maintaining the price over there okay how it will triggering in yeah. the po so we have in po That's we have okay. vendor yeah we have vendor we have purchase organization we are there so according right. to the purchase organization schema group and vendor schema group, schema group. there is right. some condition record will be maintained so as per that condition record it will fetching the price okay condition right. condi condition record is the second part but first part is how it will be triggering so to trigger it will definitely have a schema group right right yeah so okay so that you need to answer okay, okay. so that's it about yeah. uh, this so um, explanation was good your uh, subjective knowledge is good so um, i believe we have not included the implementation part and uh, other part because you have mentioned as a end user role only okay so yeah be, be prepared on that part also for the implementation get some knowledge i believe you have already some knowledge on that 
so yes, sir. be prepared on that and uh, in that also be prepared on like precisely you have to answer like uh, what are the phases and every phase what are the works are there for consultant okay sure sir sure yeah okay so that is the summary of the interview so i believe you are good to go for interview and uh, you can crack the interview okay just uh, focus yes, on sir. the focus on these points so definitely you will succeed yes sir okay thank you thank you thank you so much sir okay sure. then bye bye take care yes.